Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is video two of UML Install and Run Software Ideas Modeler. So in the last video, we went through somewhat of a detailed analysis to find uh, that Software Ideas Modeler actually was uh, at the top of the list when it comes to freeware, and in this case, actually, it's a uh, non-commercial software. And in this video, we're going to actually install it and create a use case diagram. And the goal today is to get started with uh, Software Ideas Modeler, and we'll be using this throughout the course. So the first thing you need to do is actually download the software. So go ahead and click on this link right here, or copy it into URL. Go to Software's Modeler site, and go to the Setup Package and click on that, and uh, download that. Click Download, and go ahead and save the file. And it saves as an executable. It's actually not very large and very easy to install. So once the download is completely finished, you're going to notice that it's only 1.8 megs, so it's actually a very small footprint, but it actually does a lot. So go ahead and click on that to install it, and run it. Choose a language, and hit Next, and accept the terms if you agree. And go ahead and install Software Modeler in your C program file. So don't change this, it's fine where it's going. And hit Next and create a desktop icon and when you do it will also automatically launch as well. So once that's finished the software modeler will actually come up automatically. And We're actually looking at a, a use case diagram that I created earlier that we're going to create in this lesson of the software ideas modeler and it's just a fantastic uh, package very easy to use and let's get started. So now let's return to the notes and discuss what a use case diagram really is and then we'll create one. So now that we've installed the Software Ideas Modeler, let's go ahead and use it by creating a use case diagram. So before we even get started, you really want to ask yourself the question, what is a use case? Now a use case is a description of a potential series of interactions between a software module and an external agent. And so that sounds kind of techy, but think of it in terms of something that's useful. For example, in this case, we're going to do like an e-commerce site where someone, in a sense, selects the movie, searches for a movie, puts a movie in the cart, you know, checks out. And each one of these scenarios in a case, in a sense, is a use case. Use cases have value. They actually accomplish something. They do something. And a use case should describe what the system shall do for an actor to achieve a particular goal. So use cases by themselves are not really very valuable. It's actors that interact with them that make something happen. There shouldn't be any specific language in it. Uh, it should have the appropriate level of detail. The use case is not to include detail regarding user interfaces and screens. This is done in user interface design. So what is a use case diagram itself? Now we understand what a use case is. Basically a use case is an element of the use case diagram. And the use case diagram will capture the functional requirements of the system. It will tell us what the system should do. It will describe interactions between actors and the system. And as you build your use case uh, diagram, think of all the actors that might interact and ask what uses do the actors have for this system. Uh, UML uh, use case diagrams are a visual graphics and since an outline of cases. And you should title them in terms of verb phrases. And in our particular e-commerce, we're going to use purchase video, for example. So now we've talked about use case and we've talked about actors that interact with use cases. What is an actor? Well, an actor is someone or something, it could actually be another system itself, that has a goal in using the system. The actor has a role, and so the name actor actually is a good name for a use case interaction. It wants to achieve something, achieve a goal. Uh, the primary actor initiates a use case. And in the use case, there's something called a happy path, and that's how we expect it to go. But when it doesn't go that way, you can have faults or extensions. Now, we're going to get more into use cases as we get into UML, but this is just kind of an introduction to get you working with the software. So we're going to do a purchase movie example. We're going to create actors, create use cases, connect diagram elements, uh, connect extensions, and connect inclusions. So in this particular scenario, I want you to go to your uh, IDRS modeler. We're going to create a use case diagram which demonstrates a customer selecting and purchasing a movie. Show extensions and inclusions. And so I believe that's the scenario, and this is what it's going to look like when you get to the end of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and bring up your uh, ideas modeler. So here's a diagram that I created previously, but let's talk about the software just a little bit. At the very top is a menu directory, and everything is fairly intuitive here. You can click on the menu items and go to where you need to go to, or right-click and something will happen. Over on the left, you actually see all your drawing tools, so you just basically drag items over to the screen. We'll be doing this. Right here is a stage. That's where everything's going to occur. You're going to build your diagram here. And over on the um, left is where your project tree lives. 
and all the possible diagrams that you might create. Let me stretch this out. So we can see there's actually 14 use case diagrams in this particular uh, software package, and that's pretty common. And you can see you've got um, use case, class diagrams, sequence diagrams, communication diagrams, and so forth, all 14 of them. And we'll be going through all of these in this particular course. So let's go open this back up. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a new um, project. So we'll go File, New. Let's give it a name, and typically for use case, we'll give it kind of a verb name. So we'll put purchase movie, and I'm the author, so put me. And I'm going to go ahead and paste the description of the project in there and hit save. And go ahead and click on use case diagram. And so it's already created the uh, project for you, and you can see the name is purchase movie. And there's no uh, elements in it yet, but we're going to drag some elements to the stage. So the first element, of course, is going to be an actor, and that'll be my customer. Let's go ahead and drag in the stage. And I can just double click here and just change the name to customer. Now, some of the things that a customer is going to be able to do is going to actually be to, in a sense, search for a movie. So that's a use case. So just drag a use case out on the screen. And we're going to put movie search. If you start thinking about what are the processes that a customer might do when they're purchasing a movie, they might search for the movie. Then they may essentially put that movie in a cart and purchase that movie. Then they may track its delivery and they may cancel it. So let's go and bring all those use case diagrams out. There you go. And in this case, we're going to actually uh, put in a cart. Let's bring the next one out and purchase it. Move that around. And then we want another use case to track it. And finally, in some cases, we actually might want to cancel the order. So let's go ahead and bring these up a little bit so we'll have room. Notice how I mark it around them so I can move them around. We have one more, and then we want to cancel our order. Let's move these around just a little bit to get them all together. There we go. And bring out one more use case so we can cancel. So now we're going to form an association between each one of these. So let's click on our actor and click association and just drag from that to the movie. Click on the actor and once again just drag to each one of these. Click on the actor first and hit association, just drag. And click on the actor and hit association and drag. And click on the actor again, hit association and drag. So the actor has the potential to do each one of these. Now, uh, the few things can happen here is, and that is, you can now have inclusions and extensions. So an inclusion would be, for example, when you purchase it, this may have to go to some type of merchant bank, and another actor, in a sense, will approve the credit card, and then it will come back. So let's bring out another use case. So our next use case is an inclusion, and uh, we haven't talked about what that actually is, but we will as we move on. And in this case, we're actually going to, in a sense, approve the card. So let's bring out the next use case, and just type approve and that will be an inclusion. So click on the purchase and hit inclusion. And uh, from that point we're actually going to have another actor that's actually going to do the approval process for us. And then since that actor is kind of a system, it's kind of our merchant bank. So let's drag the next actor out. And we'll just call it merchant bank. There you go. And, this, and so this particular actor is most likely a system that approves the credit card. So we'll just drag an association from the actor to the approval process. Now, in the purchase process, you actually might be uh, choosing a delivery method. So let's bring out another use case. Let's put delivery. And that, in a sense, would be an inclusion. So we draw from here to here, kind of an inclusion. So in the cancel process, you may be drawn in essentially to buy another product or basically choose another shipping method. Maybe you didn't like the way it was shipped. Maybe you determined that you need it the next day as opposed to three or four days later. So bring out another use case and we'll put uh, delivery. So after you cancel your order, you actually have the ability to, in a sense, choose another delivery method, if that happens to be the case. And so we'll call that an inclusion. And so that's how easy it is to make a use case diagram in Software Ideas Modeler. So you can see why I chose this software. It's just so fantastic. But let's go on from here. Once you're done, you can go to File, and you can export an image or an XMI which can be pulled into another software package. So that's your introduction to uh, Software Ideas Modeler. We'll be using it throughout the course, and I hope you enjoyed this. Actually, what did we learn today? Today we learned how to install a Software Ideas Modeler, and we created our first use case diagram. So that's a lot of fun. We've got a lot of cool stuff to do in this course and a lot of diagrams to learn about. And we'll be building useful scenarios like this throughout the entire uh, course. Thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.